welcome to another installment of That's a Stretch. I'm going to talk about more coworker stories. Well, not just any coworker stories, more salacious coworker stories. So, let's get stretching. Uh, I'm going to talk about more coworkers that have been kicked out of my venue uh, for various reasons. Uh, let's start with this first dude. Um, what should we call him? Let's call him George. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, so George was a very strange young man. A couple like strange things about George. He always came in like, I don't know, really spacey. I figured that might just be a trait of somebody who like works in this industry because a bunch of us are weirdos. So I figured he was just another weirdo. He's like kind of spaced out, kind of the stoner talk. You know what I mean? Um, which isn't, you know, out of the question for people that work in this industry. The other weird thing about George is, let me preface this by saying I'm pretty sure he's a gay man. Um, but whenever we were in the backstage area, which is also like a changing area, um, and it's it's co-ed, but I. I don't really care. Um, a lot of us don't really care and we've been in environments like this. And also it's a gay bar. Most of the people that are working there are gay. So like none of us are um, like particularly attracted or going to try anything with one another. But whenever he was back there changing, he would be naked for a very long time. Um, personally, I try, if I'm changing back there, I try to, you know, get in and out of stuff as quickly as possible. Um, but <laughs> not this guy. Um, one of the other like weird things that I noticed about this dude was I remember one time, um, this is a small backstage area. People, there's like a couple of ch like small chairs. If a chair is being used, we like sit on the stairs. Um, he was sitting on the stairs. I was coming down the stairs from behind him. I am pretty sure I saw gay porn playing on his phone. Um, I should have prefaced, <laughs> I should have prefaced my assumption of his sexuality based on that moment alone. <laughs> and it's not like he was like, you know, had his hand down his pants or anything while I saw this going on. It, it was just kind of playing on his phone, I'm pretty sure. Um, he wasn't like really doing anything about it with it. So again, I still <laughs> didn't think anything of it. Just a couple of weird things about, about this, this dude. Um, and then one day I find out that he doesn't work there anymore because he... <laughs> uh, so one of our stages, uh, places that we perform, um, it's like at the same level of as the bar. So like there's the bar and then there's like a, like a three, three or four foot radius um, section that extends out a little bit with a pole on it. Um, it's pretty high up, and it's a pretty small surface area, and he apparently fell off of that because he was on some sort of substance, and uh, um, thankfully he didn't hurt himself, at least like nothing serious, um, but that was like a big indication that maybe they shouldn't keep this dude. Um, he's, yeah, he seemed like pretty non-threatening, but definitely not quite there. <laughs> so that is the story of George. Let's talk about other people there. So, um, let's call this person, uh, let's call her Katie. Um, Katie is a very talented go-go dancer, um, also works as a stripper, and she's very good, gets a lot of tips. Um, also like generally nice person, good person to work with, um, in my experience. She's worked there for quite a long time. Um, and, uh, I'm also going to mention this other dude, let's call him Michael. Um, Michael also very good dancer, had worked there for quite a long time. One night, um, uh, night's going just like normal. I'm on the stage with both Katie and Michael. And K 
Katie notices a fight starting to break out uh, on the floor, and security had already started going over there. However, Katie decides to take it into her own hands, and she walks across the bar, um, like on top of the actual bar, walks over there, um, and starts getting in the middle of the fight herself, which is pretty uncool. Later on she describes herself um, trying to pull one girl off of the other because one girl was on the ground, she was trying to pull the girl that was like still hitting her while she was on the ground, she was trying to pull her off of the other girl. Um, still not the smartest idea in my opinion. Um, and then Michael decides to go over there, throws, tries to throw a drink on the girl that's getting into a fight, ends up throwing it on the security guard that's already over there. So that was a bad idea um, on all parties. I'm up there with another dancer just watching this all unfold. And uh, they proceeded to not be allowed to dance there for like a month or so. Oh, uh, what else? Um, there is one dude who... Oh, what the hell is his name? I'm debating whether or not to actually say this person's name because uh, he is actually kind of a trash human, like legally defined as a trash human, <laughs> and that'll make sense in a couple minutes here. Let's call this dude Andrew. So I had, um, I had first seen this guy Andrew um, when I was celebrating a friend's birthday at the bar that I work at. I wasn't working that night, but I still went there with a group of friends. I've noticed this dude um, as a customer previous nights um, while I was working. And then one night I'm there with my friend celebrating her birthday and I noticed that he is working as one of the dancers, which is like, oh, that's really cool. I didn't know that this guy who was a customer is actually one of the people that works here. Um, then I hear from my friend who um, I don't want, like, I didn't 100% trust this notion at first because I don't know how she knew this guy, but she said that dude's a total asshole. And I'm like, that's weird. But I didn't think, I didn't like, you know, prod the question further because I thought it was just a weird statement at first. Plus, you know, I'm trying to have fun with my friend. We're just trying to have a good time, celebrate her birthday. I don't want to get into it. Uh, later, um, I'm working, I'm working with a couple of other people, um, on a separate night. I honestly can't remember if he was working that night as well or not. I'm, I'm honestly not sure if Andrew was working there as well or not, but come to find out, um, it's some story along the lines of, so Andrew had kind of somewhat started dating one of the other dancers that works there. I think if it happened so long ago, um, but I think what had happened was the dude lied to her saying that he had just crashed his car, he needed money to repair his car, she sent him the money, uh, turns out that never happened, he basically just lied to her to get a bunch of money from her. Andrew also is, I think he's probably like in his early 20s and was dating girls that were 16, which is not okay. Um, like, as far as like laws like that, I understand if it's like a 17 year old dating an 18 year old, like that seems like not like a huge difference. But if you're like 22 and dating someone who's 16, I don't know, man, you've got other options. I don't know why you're trying to do this. Um, uh, ooh, it's, like it's, uh, okay. <laughs> um, I just had a moment where I realized, um, I don't know why in my head, my brain went 22 and 16. That's like a four year difference. No, it's not. It's six years, especially like in that age range, like six years is a big difference. Like if you're talking between, I don't know, 36 and 42, like that's a six year difference. But in terms of maturity, that's not so much. But like 
teen to early 20s, there's like a lot of formative stuff happening there. And if you're someone who's 22 and you're taking advantage of someone who is 16, uh, the fact that I <laughs> immediately said taking advantage of and not dating uh, should be indicative of something there. So I don't know exactly what happened, but uh, he doesn't work there anymore. Let's see, what other co-worker stories do I have? I mean, those are like the big ones that I can remember. Oh, that same guy, Andrew, uh, dated like a couple of other girls that uh, work at my bar. All shit, like shitty to all of them um, in various ways. Um, I'm not gonna say it because like one I heard like not directly from the girl but from like other people except for that like one story where he lied about his car she told me that one directly I do remember one time this one girl who is brand new I don't remember her name to be quite honest um, let's call her Brittany um, so our bar is not considered a topless bar. You can wear pasties, but it's not considered a topless bar except on certain nights um, where there's like probably some like fetish night going on. And, and that's really the only time that it's like kind of acceptable to go topless. Otherwise, it's technically allowed, but it's kind of looked down upon because, you know, it's a gay bar. It's not a strip club. This one girl shows up wearing pasties, which is fine, then decides to not wear the pasties. And it's like, fine, but you're kind of being a dick by taking the tips away from the other female dancers. Because if two dancers are, you know, not going free the nipple that night, and one of them is, um, all of the straight men that come into this bar. I know it's a gay bar, but a lot of straight men come into this bar. Um, all the straight men are gonna obviously gravitate to the one who's going full on nip. Only worked with that person one night. Granted, that was like close to quarantine times, so I have no idea if she is still going to be working there when I go back. I hope she's not. But yeah. Those are a, f a few of the stories that I have. That might be all the, you know, stories that I have. I might be able to tell stories about customers. Maybe I'll do that next time. <laughs> um, I'm all stretched out. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of That's a Stretch. I will see you guys next time. Bye.